go down live and direct. I be the underboss, Lord. Right. Hello, world. It is I, Bishop Lamont, camera controlled by Caps, aka Trapzilla. Yep. And we are getting ready to rock on Sirius XM, as you see. Um, getting blessed to uh, come rock on my boy Rude Jude show. You know what I'm saying? We go back many moons and so. You know, here we are, and it's great to see all the real people hold me down and believe in the movement and believe in the message. And it's time to get ignorant, so stay tuned. Hopefully, you see some fun stuff, some ignorant stuff, some really, really ignorant stuff, which you will. And yeah, that's that's all I can say. Bishop Lamont, Monster Jam Sanctuary, Pledge Music. If you haven't pre-ordered, go pre-order. Let's let's make this thing, you know, all the way out so we can have extra money to afford cocaine and heroin and. All that other baller stuff, for sure. You're stupid. <laughs> Please. We don't like heroin. We don't like it. That's a joke. We don't like booger sugar either. We do like whiskey, though. We do like whiskey, Jameson. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm good, brother. Thank you for having me, man. Good good to put eyes on you, man. Thank you. It's been a minute. I think, shit, the first time you came on the show was... Shit. Oh, five? Damn. Yeah, Is that about been. right? Could, I don't remember. It was we was on the move. It was probably 05. Yeah, yeah. Just it was right before you got signed. It was right before you signed with Dre. Yeah, then that was 05. And then you was cool as hell. And then we find out that you signed with Dre and we we're like, yeah. <laughs> See, that's good. See, you I was cool it. as hell first, and then yeah. Yeah. It's support. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, you were like a cat when you did good. We were happy for you. You know what I mean? At least I was. <laughs> I'm not saying hey, Siri was exactly. throwing shade, but like I, nah. I can't I can't jump in someone else's brain. I know I was like, yeah, man, he fucking did it. But that was the consensus, man. All the real ones always supported me, and that has never changed, and that's why we're sitting here right now. So thank you in advance. Well, thank you now, and thank you in advance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you um Bang! Yeah, you one of my favorite projects, the Cal Troy shit between you and Black, Black Milk. Milk. And uh, and because of uh my girl, my boo hex. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Sex burger, I call her. You know what I'm saying? Shouts <laughs> out to Sex Burger. <laughs> when was the last time you talked to Hex? Uh, a couple of, about a month ago. And we always text and I call him and I talk shit to him. Yeah. And, you know, he's the bootleg Nick Fury before yeah. the Samuel Jackson version. <laughs> yeah. So that's, you know, that's that's my man. And, you know, every chance I get to go back to the D, we uh, we go visit that man, me and Dave, New York. But that couch was because of him. He man, told you, me about Black Milk. You, you know cooler I mean? than I am. Like, I love Hex. I still don't go see him when I go home. <laughs> Well, that's because you hate him, and that's what yeah. we're supposed to say. Yeah. We hate you, Hex. Yeah, from Hex the bottom is, of our cold hearts. For a lot of cats, Hex was one of the. He was one of the like the move makers in Detroit. Uh, for a lot of for a lot of cats that don't know, he he was one of those guys in the D. Do your homework, and and you know he extended that to the West Coast, and now he yeah. got involved in my career from the beginning. Yeah, and made sure the dots connected with all the real ones. So yeah. he was one of the wildest people. There was like there's like a thousand stories about Hex, but I think one of my favorite ones was uh, like this couple was talk talking shit. So he knocked out the uh, knocked out the dude, and then knocked out the chick on top <laughs> of her, and they just. They was about, they was like spooning each other in the fucking parking lot. They got to spoon. Yeah. They were together. He put him to bed. He's a gentleman. Yeah, he's a real. So I love him. Yeah. My favorite song I dedicate again to him is My Boo. You know what I'm saying? Ghost Town City DJs. My Boo is is my song for him. Your game is my uh my story is when he shot himself in the foot and put a Spider Man band aid over it <laughs> by accident. Yeah, he <laughs> talks about it on the beginning of Cal Troy. That's a true story. Well, he actually shot himself he in the shot himself. I think it was with a tech or some shit. I don't remember. You know, these colors, they always have all these guns. I don't know. I don't deal with it. So I don't he, get involved. He pulled out a... Urban. He, yeah. He, Texas, <laughs> Texas Urban. <laughs> Fucking stay urban. Somehow it went off and he shot himself in the foot and he just put a Spider-Man Band-Aid over it. And called it a he day. He said some spit in a Spider-Man Band-Aid and that was, that was it. I don't know. So that's yeah. how Cal Troy happened. It was really because of Hex. So, you know, uh, Black is going to be moving out here soon. So we've been discussing off and on a Cal Troy metropolis. But before that, you know, the reformation is finally here. And then me and Mad Lib is doing an album together. So that's going to be a lot of fun, too. So what happened with, uh, like, you was here and then you were gone? It seemed like I was gone, but I wasn't. Well, I mean, I, I was, didn't see yeah. you. So therefore, in my brain, you was <laughs> yeah. gone. That's like fans saying, now, I thought you was dead. Yeah. No, like, just Google me. But no, what happened was it was a lot of turbulent times going on in Aftermath. So it's always trying to tell people the real and not the um, the uh, internet version and stuff like that. And um, it's it's really hard to to put it all out there because that's, that's personal between yeah. me and Dre. But the beauty of it was it was it was out of both of our hands. And 
not knowing that at the time and how things had to go down and having to leave that label and having to really make it be that acidic to get that freedom because it's like, man, I'm sitting there since 05. You remember how hard we were working? 05 all the way to 08. Going into 09, it's like, what's happening? And so, we're putting out all this stuff, but it's not his fault. And the beauty of it is he's he's in my graces 100%. People have stuff twisted. Hold on, let me take you, let, take me through your thought process because I've, I've been places where you're waiting for shit to happen and one year you're like cool two years you're like all right just gotta be patient three years but yeah work tough four years well was people in your corner were, were, were you like were you going crazy were people in your ear like what the fuck what was what was happening i had i had a hundred percent faith in drake because i look up to him that's my big brother was then and, and is now even more affirmed because even though the circumstances are different He's remained the same, and we finally had to have that communication. But I had 100% faith in what he was telling me. Now, the other people in the equation who remain nameless, you know, they start taking for rides and trying to put wedges. Because when you got a relationship, a genuine relationship with somebody like him who's the biggest guy in the in the business, yeah. a lot of people don't like that because they're used to sucking dick and lying to people to get that kind of treatment and that kind of respect, but it was genuine. So you have this where everybody on the outside wants in to something I'm trying to get out of because I just want to have a career. I have a family to take care of. You know what I mean? I'm coming from construction work and still doing construction work. I never totally gave up my day job. When they always tell you, don't quit your day job, that's the best advice in the world. Don't quit your day job because if you put everything into that, that shit might fall apart than what you have to fall fall back on. So, so you're doing, you, you, were, you were doing construction the whole time. Yeah, man. Yeah, we never stopped. And then when they were like, yo, 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 I'm in the studio. So you're trying to balance between being on roofs and and, and and doing drywall and rapidly rap because, you know, you want to put 100% into it, but you've heard the stories before because little people know I was ghostwriting over there before I signed. Yeah. So I saw a lot of stuff going on in the politics of it, and I hate politics. I hate all that when it's just, let's just be about the music. But anyway, so you got all these thirsty rappers who want to start dissing me because I'm signed to Aftermath, so they think that's how they're going to get on. Then you got all these people who are my friends out of nowhere or were, cool before and then the ring the ring always corrupts people's minds so you got them in my ear then you got industry people trying to undermine and then there's a wedge between me and my bro and that was the problem yeah you know what i'm saying and then you just see everything going on and it's like bills keep coming um you're putting out all these street albums and people keep asking for a release date it was crazy when you go on the air and they're like so when's it coming and you can't even give them a release date so then you start looking like i've the- been that guy i think i've asked you like <laughs> yo what's up, what's up man when's it coming so you start looking crazy yeah. it's, it's 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 the color that cried wolf yeah you know what i'm saying it's like oh well I mean, it's 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 coming. You know what I mean? So after a while, that 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 gets repetitive and soulless, and you don't want to be a liar. You don't want to be any of those things. So I put my money where my mouth was, and we put out what at that time was like five street albums for free. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, and my 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 incentive was always get one free, buy one whenever yeah. we could weather the storm. But it just came to a point where it wasn't going to happen, and there were things that were going on unbeknownst to me at the time. So it made it a greater understanding when me and Dre got to sit down, like. Damn, I guess it was two years ago when it, when we started working on the Compton soundtrack. Yeah, and I got that phone call. You know, first we were on the phone, and he was like, you know, and it was nervous energy because we ain't talked in a billion years. Right. So I guess he thought I was gonna be on some some raw raw negative shit, nothing of the sort. It was like, bro, we should have did this a long time ago. So you worked on the Compton? Compton no, no. Album? I was while oh. they were working on the Compton soundtrack. I went up to Record One to yeah. sit with him and and just piece it out. And he was like, man, come up to the studio tonight or tomorrow. I'm here. You sound like the same dude. The energy is good. We got a lot to talk about. So then came up to the studio, sat down, sitting in the kitchen at Record One. And it's it's funny um, because that's what it should have been. That's how it started. Let's that's talk about these last five years. Psst. What was going on for you? Oh, uh, the struggle. Yeah. The struggle is real. Just maintaining and having faith in what you do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? When everybody writes you off and says, blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it ain't never happened to him because well, he didn't work there, you know? And they just write you off. So it's up to you and the motherfuckers that believe in you and your family to keep having faith and keep having hard work, perseverance, and what you believe in and what you made. I wasn't dope because I signed to Dr. Dre. It made everybody recognize that I was dope because I signed to Dr. Dre because the greatest producer in the world said so. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't yeah. take away if things don't work out. So now... Flash forward, I learned who was real and who wasn't. And I learned that I have to stick to my principles, my morals, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. and 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 not give up and not relent and make my reality what I want it to be. And that's what that testament, it was a testament to that when he sat down and he was like, I apologize. And I was like, you ain't got to apologize to me. That's big that you would do that. 
You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's between me and him. But I can share that and go at his point of what he's been successful at. He still saw in his heart to go. I want to make peace with this. And I apologize for what you went through because it shouldn't happen like that. Did he want to bring you back or were you like, nah, this is that was that's where it was at. I want to be solo now. Um, it wasn't even that it was it was a heart to heart. It wasn't even about business. It was right. for the soul. That's why now I'm like once that burden was off my back because that's personal. It had nothing to do with music. It's just crazy when your personal relationship and your life can be out in the public eye. Mm. And since it's with such a famous dude, everybody wants to criticize and play with your shit, but they don't know what it really is. So yeah, for me, that was the burden off my back because they don't know the history between me and Dre. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So now it's peace and now it's easy. Everything is right because we got to have that talk. Not everybody else in between speculating and saying they whole shit because they jealous because they afraid they don't want me to be on whatever. Now nobody can fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? Because I talked to Big Bro and we peace. That was the only burden on my back. Like, yo, that shit went sideways. And I wish we could have talked Were about you, it. Did you feel fucked up about it over these years? A hundred fucking percent. Anybody that doesn't say that, think think about all the hard work we did and how big the buzz was. And when Grow Up was number one in one week and everything was, was moving and then cease and desist. And we understand why that happened. You know what I'm saying? But it was like, I'm trying to prove it to you that it is time. But there was shit going on that I didn't know. So I was stern to the fucked up gumbo unbeknownst. And it made yeah. more tension on relationship because it's like, yo, I'm just trying to get out. I'm trying to have a career. I'm it's trying hard to be, on to be tour. It's, it's hard to be patient when you're hungry. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it's hard to be patient when you're hungry, man. And I, it would have been different if it was, you know, two years. But it was it was five years. Yeah. How, how, how long will your advance last? Ten years later. <laughs> ten Real years, talk. Ten years later and everything's changed. You kind of don't even... A lot of people have it have it structured where they don't really use majors, or at least they don't claim that they use majors. Message, you, you dig? Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. These cats think think they're buying independent and shit. Yeah, you independently buying some surprise, low key. Yeah. right, right, right. Look at the fine print. Um, you know, for me, it's just understanding what we were doing then, and even though we were on a major, we were still doing everything ourselves. Yeah. So moving forward and going back to the streets and doing what we're doing and just putting out our stuff the way we want to put it out. I love that, and I love being in control of my own destiny. It's, it's no disrespect to anybody that feels that they need to put their future in somebody else's hands, but for me as a grown man, being a father, having a family, um, I would prefer that if I succeed, I succeed. If I fail, I fail. I have nobody to blame. I'm proud of me or I'm upset with me, but it's going to be on you know me me and my brother Caps and everybody that's down with it, and mm. that that's a greater level of peace and happiness to yourself when everything you do, because, you know, if you're doing something for yourself, you ain't going to half-ass it. At least for me, personally, if you care about what you're doing in your life, you're going to make sure it's 100%. And you don't got to rely and check on somebody else and say, yo, did you do so-and-so? No, it's us. So I'd rather work hard because it's not about being rich. It's about being comfortable. It's about being happy. It's about doing what you love. And that's all I care about. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not worried about none of that corny shit. Because at the end of the day, if you have a place to go home and be happy, comfortable, bills are paid, you do what you love, you ain't got no fucking voice in your head being upset because you're not living out your dreams. I always say that to people too. I watched a lot of people get crushed by major labels. And I'm one of those very rare exceptions where it never took my soul. It never took my identity. It, it put me through the fire, but I kept going through the fire and I stayed me and it gave me greater intestinal fortitude as the saying goes. So I say that to anybody out there. Don't let motherfuckers kill your dreams. Don't let circumstances kill your dreams. You got to look at the cause and effect of things. And that's what I did, that whole process of enduring it and watching what I said in interviews because people love to twist your shit because they just want headlines. It sounds like you're owning your part, too, though. You know, it sounds like you are able to look in the mirror and be like, all right, man, I fucked up man, here. I fucked, I fucked up. up there. And it's, if I would have shut up here. Right. It wouldn't yeah. have been me and my big mouth like yeah. Tupac used to say. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like you have to be conscious and accepting of the whole story. You can't play the victim. I agreed to sign to that label. I rolled with my bro. I rolled through all that shit. You know what I'm saying? So you can't sit there and be like, I'm a victim. No, it's just circumstances got fucked up and that's how you roll the dice. It happens that way. Mm. But are you that much more of a man to handle that shit and come through the fire and be that much doper? I see a lot of motherfuckers that don't even know who they are no more, and they dressing funny, they making funny music, they ain't yeah. sticking to the same principles. They not, they not. This, the conduct is different. I'm the same dude. I just got my Ron Isley wig. I'm growing, I'm growing the fur. Yeah, I, see I got my you, Muhammad bro. Ali coming. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Coming out, it's looking I miss good. my idol, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do my Muhammad Ali thing. But that's it. That's all the change. I still lift weights. You know what I'm saying? We we we, we still eat. You know, horses and, and rhinoceroses and elephants. We fight them in the jungle. We still on that, but it's a greater understanding. You know of who I 
I am and what I'm here to do. Let's play some. Let's play one of your songs. Ah, uh, I guess we'll start with "Back Up Off Me" featuring that Coon Exhibit. And uh, Z. yeah, we have fun. You know, it's it's just good working with everybody, man. That the the old regime is the same regime, just a lot wiser, more intent on you know just rocking, man, and showing people what it is. I've been waiting a long time to get it on. It's so, been a minute, huh? This is man message. This is back up off me, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it. Oh fuck yeah, yeah. But I ain't gonna put nobody on blast. I just go. <laughs> I see. Yeah. I see. You I saw see. my next question, right? <laughs> So that was coming. We stay away from the, you know, we, we ain't going to hurt nobody's feelings. Whatever, man. Yeah, you go, what? Talk shit about it. You can beat them up. You lift, lifting know, all them weights and I, shit. I, ain't I've that changed. the What's the purpose of lifting all them damn weights if you can't start calling out rappers, Bishop? I mean, I'd rather see them in person and beat them up quietly. All right. And, all you right. know, it's just, you know, because people call the police. People do all kind of stuff, man. They be so street and they got a million police around them. And you'd yeah. be like, oh, Jesus Christ. You know, so yeah. I'd rather not. But I will say this. I'll be like, I'll see I see heroes of mine and big homies trying to placate to the kids and dress like the kids and rap like the kids. And they afraid to do what they do best. You know what I mean? And so that's the disappointment. It's like, don't stop doing what you're doing. Yeah. There's always another generation, but that generation will love what you do, too. And let them have room to figure they shit out, too. I'm not mad at it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I listen to what works for me and what doesn't. You know what I'm saying? And But I still do me because I know fans out there and people out there don't even know about me yet could appreciate and will appreciate what I have to offer. You know what I mean? And, and that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable in my skin. You not the way you doing this one is how, how how are you doing? Like, how, how are you releasing this album right here? It's through a, it's through a setup called pledge music. It's similar to Kickstarter, but the difference in pledge music is that it's basically a virtual label. So they can press up your vinyl. They can press up your CDs. They can press up your merchandise. Okay. And from what's, brought together all of it's taken care of you yeah. see what i'm saying yeah. so and that's all you so that's why i say i appreciate that so for those listening you can go pre-order now at bishop um you know and for five cents a day a child of hip-hop can eat. <laughs> so but i mean that's the beauty of it so this was just the initial campaign to break the ice and let people know that the long-awaited album that they thought was a unicorn is actually here right so then you know after that we have our whole setup we're doing with, how with, much of the album is new stuff and how much of it is stuff that's 10 all years of it's old? new uh the only what thing are you gonna I, do with all the old like how you must have what like 70 old songs 700 are I you left, fucking kidding me? I left on me? a hard drive with 700 songs. Yeah. What and, are you going to do with all those? Um, uh, I don't know because it's, it's, it's working that out with producers. It's working out with other artists. And then, you know, my thing is, I guess there's a point in time when stuff can be put out and then, um, you know, we'll come to that. But I'm so concerned about now where my energy is you now. Wanna do, you want to do something current. I want to do, I want to do what's in my heart. Going through that shit, it was a lot of dark shit. It was a lot right. of depressed shit. It was a lot of stressed out shit. It was a lot of frantic shit. It was a lot of, of it was a lot of fear and anticipation yeah. of the hammer coming down. I don't like that energy. Some of that shit is hard as fuck. If if you want to go into that to, into that vibe, but I'm good where I am now. And so yeah. this album is is all brand new. The only thing I kept was the intro that I had, Lord Finesse. Bless it and bring bring the album in on that that yeah. Khalil produced and it's insane. It's called uh, I Found My Way Out. And uh, but other than that, everything is new. I just kept that beat and that intro, but everything is brand new. No, no, no recycle. No, no old. Everything for now. Yes. So <laughs> that bad accent. <laughs> that was but, really uh, good. I, oh, I can't even look at him right now. I'm oh, yeah, and I'm just high off coffee. Thank you, Sapphire. Thank you. Thank you. We're partying. She gave me energy. She she liked my hair. Her hair is nice too. Let's go We're to doing this. What? Chi what? Uh, what? Chiba in LA. Go ahead, oh, Chiba. Oh. What up, bitch? This is uh, New York Days, little brother. Oh, Pimp Juice, what's happening? Another day, man. I'm saying you're doing it right over there, man. You're making it sound real good on the radio, man. Just want to show you some love. See, bless you for that energy, brother. Bless you for that. Anytime, man. And Anytime, make sure you go pre order that album, Playboy, because I have an addiction to booger sugar and I can't afford it without the money. John in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, the listening party's coming up in Carson, so get with me later, man. What's up, John? Yo, what's going on, Joe? What's going on, Bishop? What's up, bro? Shit, man, I just wanted to give you some love. New shit is sounding bright, bro, and I just really, really wanted to call up to say that, yo, I'm loving hearing your story, hearing that you never had to sell out on the bullshit, and just hearing that you're doing good, man. Hope Message! Stay with it. Hope it, come, hope it come back around for you, homie. Man, thank you. And, and please help me doing that by spreading the word about going to bishoplamont.com and buying the album. It takes the people to make it happen. So thank you for that energy, man. That's what it's about, oh, man. Most, most definitely, man. Upstate got you. 
Bless you, bless you. I know the, all the motherfuckers that say they want the real hip hop back and be the first one to steal your album and shit. Yeah, yo, you want yeah, the real hip hop? Go buy that shit, man. Not you, but yeah, no, not I'm you. Sure. But it's hey, motherfuckers out there. You sound like a real honest guy. You a John. real dude because yeah. you said I'm, I'm sending love and that's the energy that's that's necessary. But they be like, yeah, bring real hip hop back, and then they wait for that shit so they can just bootleg it. Like ah, oh, yeah, bring real hip hop back so I can torrent that shit. Right, bitch ass uh, niggas. Jazz, go ahead and Cali. Hey, right, what up, what up, what up, Bishop? What up, Pionk? Nah, shit, man. Hey, that shit with Exhibit, that shit was hard, man. Man, thank you, man. You know, we just trying to make it feel yeah. right and feel authentic again for the West Coast and just everywhere when it comes to this hip-hop thing and have a real voice for the streets, you know, and, and, and you know, have, uh, what you call it, song identity, where you where you know who you're listening Hell to. Yeah. And you you know the niggas, you're like, who is that? That sounds like someone's, no, that's that's us, 100%. Bam. And that nigga Jai on that shit? Who that is? Ja Drummer? Oh, Ja Drummer. No, that's that's, that's King that's Karnov. My that's my nigga. Man, that's that's pimping too. Nah, he didn't he didn't get he didn't get a he didn't get a slot on this because it was the illest of the illest, but we've been building on some new shit. So thank you for for shouting out Ja Drummer. Shouts out to Ja Drummer out there. He got some new shit. We've been building. But that's uh King Karnov, Chris Knox, and Focus. You know what I'm saying? On that joint right there. And uh Caleb, Caleb Simmons from from Halifax. I love to give everybody their credit. You know what I'm saying? Here's a little something for you. Message! Here's a little something. Oh! Damn. Damn. That's a classic, man. What, what, what is that for? I just, wanted, I just wanted to remind you. Oh, Cal Troy. And Hex, Hex right now yeah. said, I hate you. Thank you. I hate you too, girl. Cal Troy, Cal shouts out to Hex. Shouts out to everybody in the D. Ronnie Euro. Elza, a.k.a. Blanket. Um, man, it's a good feeling. Thank you, man. See? If y'all know about Cal Troy, you'll get that Cal Troy too. You get paid off of this if they get it? Yes, we do. You know why I waited so long, motherfuckers, to get it on. Whatever can and will slip or fail, what go wrong? When it comes to business, kiss your friendship so long. So-called friends, just do your shit till it's all gone. Lie to your face and then act like ain't nothing wrong.